Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dunce and Dragons, and we're specifically going to talk about Jeremy Crawford and one of his recent statements on uh, game design, specifically as he was talking about Morden Kanan's Morden Kanan presents the the monsters of the multiverse. All right, so this has turned out to be an incredibly important book. It, it's it's um, it's strange because it it seems like a reprint, but it. It has so many changes in it, it doesn't really function as a reprint. But he said something really, really fascinating. So he said in an... So he was being interviewed by Todd Kenrick. Hey, that's cool. Todd Kenrick's back, right? So Todd Kenrick lost, uh, left Dungeons & Dragons Beyond in a very emotional, uh, like... You know, it was like an event, right? Like, it was it was a pretty big deal when, when he left. And then he was doing his own stuff, and he wasn't connect. He wasn't officially connected to Dungeons and Dragons in any way. Uh, so he left Dungeons and Dragons D and D Beyond. And literally, like when he explained why he was leaving, and it was very vague, he cried. Like it was a big event from 2021. He's ba- Todd Kennery's back, and he's with official Dungeons and Dragons, not over on the side Aux Company, you know that that is running D and D Beyond. But he like you know he's getting his check from from Dungeons and Dragons now from Wizards of the Coast. I'm really excited. I'm that's just I could do a whole video on that, but I'm just like really excited that Todd Kenner's back. Just from a personal perspective, I've watched his videos. He's nobody in D and D. Nobody at Wizards of the Coast is as good at, at doing videos as he is. He did a great job with this. Sorry. So he's talking to uh, Jeremy Crawford, and Jeremy Crawford says something fascinating. He's talking about the 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 elf. He's talking about races specific abilities. Right. He's saying. First thing he says, like, we got rid of the attributes for races, the set attribute for races, and we're saying, hey, you set the attributes for races. And the reason why is he said, hey, we want you to play an, uh, a gnome warlock, not just a half-elf warlock or a tiefling warlock, right? Um, and we don't want the mechanics to punish you for choosing a half-orc cleric, right? Rather than making the half-orc barbarian, you know, like, and he's like, once we get, you know, we're getting rid of these attributes specifically to allow you to not be punished for saying, I'm going to run, you know, a, uh, a Goliath artificer, right? You know, and uh, yeah, honestly, there's no question, right? It does make the races less distinct, right? And so there's, there's a loss there, but the gain there is to say, race, you know, race is something that's in us, right? And the abilities are still going to be unique and powerful and make these races distinct, distinct and different. We are different, you know, like he's saying Dungeons and Dragons races are different. However, we don't want to create stereotypes based on the mechanics. And this attribute thing is something that we can lay down and then fit into the world of a much, much, much better view, right, of true inclusivity, right, in, like, and having inclusivity, you know, embraced from the mechanics and the story, right, and, uh, you know, I I have to say, I I thought it was very honest, right, and I totally agree, I, like, we're losing something for, for, for these attributes, the races are less distinct, but what we gain is so much higher value, right? And in order to get why we're going down this road, you have to look at the game from the story perspective. You have to look at the game from the mechanical spectrum. And you have to look at Dungeons & Dragons' place in the cultural conversation today. And that's that's why I love Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition so much. Is they're like, we refuse to step away from the cultural conversation. We're not going to sit and stick our, our head in the sand. Everything that's happening today is our world. And we're going to discuss it in the game, both through mechanics and through story. And it's the most courageous approach that Dungeons and Dragons has ever had in any edition, right? And I, I just really appreciate the the honesty and the time Jeremy Crawford um, put into it. But then he was talking about the abilities, right? And he talked about the abilities of the races, and then he specifically talked about this elf ability trance. And he said, "Listen, you know, we've been saying this about elves for." multiple editions and multiple decades that trance works in a particular way and allows them to do something but mechanically it wasn't accomplishing it and we changed the, this ability right 
so that what the game was saying for multiple editions and for multiple decades was a reality in the in the story element, right? What we were saying with the story element, with the, what is the story element? It's the art, it's the novels, it's all the other products, right? And and it's even some of the you know some of the text within the books. And he's like, we wanted to make sure that the mechanical matched the story, and that what we had been saying for at many editions and for for multiple editions and multiple decades became a reality was was actually delivered right this is a deep subject he said like we've been saying this with many editions we've been saying it for for mul- for multiple decades as dungeons and dragons but we haven't actually delivered right deep deep statement right and so one of the things I, you know the thing that popped out in my mind is like They've been saying that combat is fast and fun in Dungeons and Dragons for for many editions and for multiple decades, and it has never, ever been true, and it still isn't true. Like, even in 5th edition, it's not uncommon to get into an hour and a half combat, which is not cinematic, not fast, and in my opinion, frankly, not fun, right? We really massively need to take what the game has been saying for multiple editions, right? And telling people, hey, this is as cool and fun as video games. This is as cool as fun as reading a book. It's as cool and as fun as watching a movie. But it never delivered it, right? Like, and and people get get to the table and they're like, there's a lot of complexity here, and there is a ton of um, like slowness, right? And this doesn't feel cinematic. It feels crunchy and slow and boggy, right? Like, and so, you know, I have a I have this dream. You know that will reach will reach that cinematic speed we're all hoping for, right? But I also I looked at Jeremy Crawford and I just like I was so just inspired by him saying, "When we are at work, we are not thinking about turning this dial right on on the mechanics of the game. Not we're not just thinking about turning this mechanical dial right, or we're not just thinking about the story mode. We're also thinking about." Dungeons and Dragons legacy at every level. Gary Gygax, TSR, Wizards of the Coast, um, Hasbro. It's many, many facets of legacy and history, right? And each distinct edition and it's what it brings to legacy and saying in 5th edition, we will fix problems that have existed for decades, Right? And it's just so inspiring and wonderful and, you know, brings a lot of joy to me because it's so unique to Dungeons & Dragons. And this is why Dungeons & Dragons is not just another tabletop role-playing game. It does belong as your primary game, as your 51% game, right? Not as your 100% game, but as as your primary game because it doesn't function like any other game. There are no other games, I would say there might be, you might be able to count on one hand the number of ttfrbs or like what do we think about our you know our previous di- what do we think about our legacy what do we think about our previous editions right pathfinder might come close but they're more like how do we stop making pathfinder creator uh, third party creators make um, immediately making a product for us and then immediately making it for Dungeons and dragons as well because you know like that you know, they have way bigger concerns than their like legacy they have very now urgent concerns and a lot of catch up to do uh, I think Warhammer Fantasy is one where they've had multi. They're up around you know sixth or seventh edition, and they might have some legacy. It's hard for the tabletop fantasy role playing game community to really um, like care about it because it's British, right? Like, and we don't really understand their culture, or the, you know, you know, in a way that allows us to get all the nuance of their history and their legacy, right? Um, and but like. It doesn't work the other way with America, right? Like, America's legacy, it's there, like, trust and believe, right? I cut when it hits politics time, every country, like Britain, Canada, France, everybody's talking about America's politics. And the rest of the world talks about our politics. It's the same thing. Like, Dungeons and Dragons is in such a unique position, it has an impact that is global, right? Whereas if, like, these other international games, you know, America just doesn't pay attention to the international stuff right now at that level. Not saying we shouldn't, but it's just it's just not there. So I was really encouraged by this, and I just am fascinated that 
every day when they go into the building and they get their coffee, they sit down and are like, okay, I'm going to build a good tabletop fantasy role-playing game, but I can't forget the legacy of every edition that every word I write today, it all matters. You know, it's, it's just, it's an incredibly joyous realization. And uh, link for his, his, um, his video is below. Uh, that's my opinion. What do you think? Um, and what do you think are some of the some of the issues that that they should be fixing now in fifth edition that got that they got wrong in one e two e three e and four e? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing, and have a wonderful millennium.